everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, let me ask you a question. Are you one of the many people who, when they're at work or busy around the house, find themselves lagging in the middle of the morning or the middle of the afternoon? The energy and pep these people had a few hours before seems to have deserted them. They let down, unable to give their best to their work. Well, that's just where Horlick's tablets comes in most handy. A few tablets dissolved in the mouth will renew the energy supply quickly, give you new vitality. Or if it's hunger that has been making you feel uncomfortable, Horlick's tablets will give you nourishment, satisfy that empty feeling. There's nothing really else in this world like these tablets to help ward off hunger and fatigue. It's so easy, too, to carry Horlick's tablets with you, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Shopping, motoring, golfing, working at the office or factory. Get a flask from your dealer in either natural or chocolate flavor. He has them in handy 10-cent flasks and in larger sizes if you desire them. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Abner sold his Jotham Down store for $2,000, he certainly has been living a life of ease. He bought a second-hand automobile and hired a chauffeur and is spending all of his time showing the citizens of Pine Ridge his idea of how a socialite should conduct himself. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Cedric Weehunt over at Lum's house seeking some information concerning the Great Western Sterling Silver Company, in which he has invested in a small amount of capital. Listen. Yeah, you'll have to talk to Squire about that, Cedric. I'm just the president of the company. See, he's looking after the business end of it. Well, you said when we bought that stock from you, though, we'd be getting some money back out of it for this time. Well, yeah, I figured we would, but can't expect to get no dividends when we ain't even started digging the silver out of the mine yet. That, that's another thing, Mr. Lama. Well, what does them uh, dividends look like? I don't know that I ever seen one. Why, dividends is just the same as cash money, Cedric. That's your profit. Yes, Mom. Well, if it's just the same to you fellas, I just leave you keep them dividends for yourself and give me what I've got coming in cash. <laughs> I don't know nothing about them and as good as I do money anyway. Well, dividends is cash money, Cedric. But like I told you, there won't be no profits till we start selling some silver. Well, Mr. Squire must be getting some money back out of it, though. I heard him telling Professor Willoughby he's making more money out of the silver mine than any deal he ever pulled. Well, he ain't got no dividends back yet, though. See, the money he's getting back so far is uh, just the money that uh, takes in on the stock he's selling. All he's doing now is getting part of the money he invested in it to start with. See, he had to go out there to Arizona and buy the mine. He must be making something out of it, too, though. He bought himself an automobile. He has. I hadn't heard that. Must be a big one, too, for I heard him tell Professor Willoughby this morning he was taking everybody in Pine Ridge for a ride. Well, that's nice of him. Well, he ain't going to be stingy with his car like Mr. Abner is, I reckon. Well, I don't think Abner's been stingy, Cedric. He's just been so busy going places and he ain't had time to take nobody out with him. Personal, I wouldn't want to ride with him. Give into the county seat the other day with him like they scared the daylights out of him. Yes, Ma, that's the chauffeur of his drives awful fast. I wish I had a job like that, driving a big car for somebody. Except I can't work now on account of me in society. That's what Professor Willoughby says. Yeah, he says that, but I don't believe there's nothing wrong with a fellow working, whether he's in society or not. Well, I wish he would change the rules on that, for Paul's going to have to open up that blacksmith shop and go back to work pretty soon, I know. We've had up nearly all of our garden staff over there. Well, you tell Caleb I said he won't get thrown out of society if he goes back to work any time. Might be some little time yet before we start getting any dividends from the silver mine. Wait a minute. Somebody at the door. Come in. Come in. Well, come in, Dick. Howdy. Howdy, Long. Hello, Cedric. Well, how are you, Mr. Dick? How are you today, Dick? Sit down. Yeah, just fine. Just fine, Lump. Say, I just heard that uh, Luther Phillips' barn burned down this morning. Well, I do know. Uh, shut the door there, Cedric. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Luther's barn burned down? Yeah, I just heard it a while ago. Well, must not have run the fire alarm ring over the party line. 
Yes, I've been right here in the house nearly all day. No, no, they was all over across the river, chopping cotton. They didn't know anything about it till the women folks came to the house at noon to cook dinner. Well, I bet I know who done it. Who done what? It's that part of Luther's barn. I bet you it was Mr. Abner. Abner? <laughs> Where in the world did you ever get such an idea as that, Teddy? Well, I know he sets things on fire, but my pa said so. Caleb said that about Abner? Yes, Mom said ever since Mr. Abner got in society, he's been setting the whole town on fire. <laughs> oh, fuck. Now, listen, Teddy, don't you go around starting on take three reports as that. <laughs> Your pa never meant that about it. Well, I know. Well, he sure acted like you meant it. Sit down, Dave. Sit down. Excuse uh, me. No, no, I can't stay, Mom. I just brought over a letter I wanted to show you. You know, I was telling you the other day that I couldn't understand this fellow Worthington that came in here and offered you fellas a million dollars for that silver mine, saying that he was from Arizona and then having Oklahoma license tags on his car. Yeah, I know you made mention of it. Well, I took down the number of his license tags and wrote to the Oklahoma Highway Department and asked them who the tags were issued to, and then I got this letter back this morning. Well, what all did they have to say? Well, I think they... Uh, well, where are you going, Cedric? I think I better be getting back over the place, Mr. Lowe. All right, Cedric. Come back again. Yes, Mom, I will. And they said what, Dick? Why, they say that those license tags were issued to Mr. W.A. Walker in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, I do know. wonder what Mr. Worthington was doing with him on his car. <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. And they go on to say that Mr. Walker reported that the tags were stolen from his car and that they issued him new tags. Stolen? Yeah, so evidently Worthington was using a stolen license tag on his car. <laughs> Oh, undoubtedly, Mr. Worthington wouldn't steal no license tag with as much money as he's got. <laughs> he wouldn't think so. I grant you, I bound you that chauffeur of his had done it. I never liked his looks from the first time I seen him. Sort of a sneaking looking fellow. Yeah, well, the whole thing is beginning to look suspicious to me, Rob. And if I were you, I don't believe I'd sell any more of that stock to my friends around here until we find out more about it. Well, I don't see no reason for that. Well, the way these people, they're all friends of yours, and they're mortgaging their homes and everything else they can get their hands on to raise money to buy stock in that silver mine. So you want to be sure that you're not selling something that they'll lose every dollar they've got. Well, even with Mr. Worthington did steal the license tags, that ain't got nothing to do with the silver mine. Well, no, but him coming in here, that kind of a fella being mixed up with Squire and offering a million dollars for that mine, it didn't look right to me to start with, and... I just believe you ought to check up on a little more. Find out more about this mine before you persuade your friends to buy. Well, if he does buy a steel license tag, uh, if he steals silver, that's what it'd bother me. Well, you can't tell, old Lum. There's something suspicious about these tags having been stolen and they're on Worthington's car. Oklahoma tags when he's supposed to be from Arizona. Well, no, if I talk my friends into buying the stock and the silver mine was to turn out to be no good, I don't know what I would do. Right? Yeah, well, of course, it may turn out to be all right, but just to be on the safe side, I wouldn't sell any more of it now we have a chance to investigate the little part. Well, I still believe the mine's all right. Of course, just to be safe, I might sort of slow down a little on selling the stock. I would, yeah. Ain't been selling very fast the last couple of days, no how. See, right after Mr. Worthington made us that offer, why, we were just selling it fast we could. <laughs> but I reckon they all invested all the spare money they had now. Yeah. I got a check in my pocket for $110. That's all I've made in the last three days. Yeah, well, uh, you better hold back till I can find out more about this fellow Worthington. Yeah, I expect you to wait a minute. Come in. Well, oh, howdy, howdy. Well, yeah, come in, Abner. Yeah, uh, you, Abner. Oh, just on the collar, brother. Sit down, Abner. Draw up that rocker there. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mom. Saw the pot walking over here in the sun. Yeah, where? Whereabouts is your car? Oh, it's over at the place. Sitting out there inside the house. I ain't got nobody to drive. What's the matter with your sofa? Yeah, where's Adolph? Oh, I had to let him go. And that's what I come over to see you about, too, Mom. See me about? Yeah. Well, I don't want no job being your chauffeur. Oh, I don't mean that. I, I mean, I just, just want to talk to you a little on a, on a matter of business. Business? Well, here, you fellas want to talk business. I'll get out of your way. No, sit down, dear. No, sit i got to be going anyway. Right? Abner couldn't have nothing so important. You couldn't hear. Well, I just want to bring that letter over to you, and I've got to rush back to the store. Well, I'll be over there to see you directly, Dick. i got to get a few things for supper. All right, man. I'll see you at the lodge. Yeah, glad you come over. Mom, something awful's happened. Something awful? Yeah, you, you know, I said I weren't driving my car today. I'm, you I'm, ain't had a 
Abner, I told you you're going to have an accident and hurt somebody driving that car around here. If I ask you, you well, now, wait right? a minute now. I ain't had no accident. With the car, anyway. I just went broke. Went broke? Lost the ever in the closet. Oh, for goodness sake. That's the reason I had to let Adolph go. Them horses that I was betting on yesterday lost. So I did, too. You mean to say you lost your money in there at the racetrack? Every cent I had. Oh, for goodness sake. It's just a good lesson for you. Good enough for you. The way you've been carrying on here lately, anybody would have went broke. Yeah, I know it. I- I'm ashamed to death of myself. I just started out to learn Elizabeth a lesson, but I got to liking this society so well, I just went hog wild, I reckon. All I've got left out of $2,000 I've got from that store is just that old second-hand automobile. And it's a hog for gasoline. Well, don't come around here wanting to borrow no funny money from me. Well, I, I never wanted to borrow nothing, Mom. I, I, I just got to find something to do. And just wondered if you know where I could get any work. You actually want to go back to work, huh? I've got to. There ain't enough to eat in our house to run us three days. We ain't got a nickel. Are you sure you're through with this society foolishness? I hope I never hear the word spoke again. I always said that there wasn't nothing to it. Now I know it. I'm uh, still in fine rig anyway. Well, that's the way I love to hear you talk, Captain. <laughs> you're sounding like your old self now. I think we're both getting our reasoning back. Yeah. And I think I've got a hide it. You mean where I can get a job? No, Abner, me and you has always made a success in the grocery store business. Yeah. All has done well in partners. Sure, so, so. Well, I've got a little money in the bank, and I've got a check in my pocket for $110 in commissions I've made on selling this silver mining stock. Yeah. You can sell your car and get what cash you can out of that, and we'll go back into the store business. We'll go right over and see if we can buy the Jotham Down store back from Snake Hogan. Is it a go? Hi, doggy. Put her there. <laughs> well, it looks as though the old firm of Edwards and Peabody might again dominate the grocery business in Pine Ridge. If you've ever wondered why the medical profession has always been such a strong advocate of Horlicks for the convalescent person, here's the reason. Horlicks has the qualities necessary in a convalescent food. It is palatable, easy to digest, nourishing, and bodybuilding. Leading hospitals throughout the world give Horlicks to their patients for building up strength, for giving them needed weight and energy. Often, when a patient cannot sleep, these hospitals serve Horlicks just before retiring. It soothes and relaxes, helps the patient get much sounder, more refreshing sleep. If you are just recovering from an illness, try Horlicks yourself. Or if you know of anyone in need of building up, suggest this famous bodybuilder to them. They can get it, you know, at any drugstore in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bricker, beginning for Lum and Abner and Horlicks. We now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.